Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Yeah. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a couple clips of Marissa Matthews saying that weight is genetic and fat people are systemically oppressed. These are going to be several clips of her responding to hate comments, which are some of my favorite. Please be sure to check out my second channel where I reacted to one of those cringy ASMR role plays. This one is about a girlfriend who has kidnapped you. Here's a link. Before we proceed, please click the like button so that I may apply comb to mustache. All right, she's going to be responding to this comment that says, No one shoved hot dog, pizza, hamburger, various food down your throat. Deal with the consequences. So because my body is genetically different than other people who eat and who are naturally thin. Okay, starting this off with lies, I see. That means that I'm supposed to be invalidated for my experiences and the trauma that I experience. Other people are genetically different. They eat and they are thin. That's not okay. Make it make sense. Humanity is dead then. Okay, so she claims to be genetically different. When she eats, she gains weight. <laughs> Unlike when other people eat. We really need to stop implying that any part of weight gain is genetic at all. Like, I'm sick of hearing anybody say that. They're like, well, some part of it is genetic. No, none of it's genetic. None of it is genetic at all. You cannot gain weight if you don't put things into your mouth. It's physically impossible. We need to let go of that idea entirely. Maybe where you store your weight, right? Your mom had an end table ass and you also have an end table ass, but you had to eat the food to put the fat in your body to create the end table ass, so. Next. Now she's gonna be responding to this comment that reads, Bruh, fatness is not genetic. Have you ever researched this? The mom's fat cells literally transfer to her child. What? They said it's not genetic, but then at the end they said the fat cells literally transfer to the child. Okay, I'm confused. I really hate to be the one to educate everyone today, it seems. But... <laughs> yeah, it's really sad that you have to educate all these morons, Marissa. But I hate to tell you this, but genetics is a factor in someone's health and their body size. Um, no. So some people genetically cannot starve to death. Take a look at the above little diagram. So for environmental, you have all of these things. Socioeconomic, you have all of these things that, that help determine someone's health. Wait, you've got a little diagram there? Oh, well, screw everything that I've seen for the past several years using my own two eyes out in society. It's all genetic and none of it is anybody's fault. That takes care of that. And between individual and sociocultural, we have what? Oh, Janetta! <laughs> Why are you whispering this to me? I thought you were loud and proud. Here's another. If you want another um, diagram of determinants of health, you can have that. Dude, all these diagrams mean nothing, okay? I've lost weight. And I've met others that have too. How obese was the person that made all these diagrams? That's what I want to know. The only social determinant of health is that you are taught to eat a certain way by your family. There's no genetic component to obesity. You learn how to eat from your parents because you grew up with them. So if they're overweight, you're going to be overweight too because you're eating the same way. Or this one, look at that. Biology and genetic endowment. Look at that right there. Okay, well, looking at various diagrams doesn't mean anything. The people that have actually lost weight aren't using any sort of diagram as an excuse for why they did or didn't. They just did. Everybody who's not accomplishing anything seems to be caught up on these diagrams, so I would recommend just letting them go, right? All the successful people that I've met aren't caught up on diagrams that explain why they can't succeed in life. Personally, I would rather follow people that get things done rather than people that have 10 different diagrams explaining why they can't get anything done and it's not their fault, personally. Let's see, and as we can see from this super scientific data here, it is not my fault. All right, thank you, medical science, for backing me up there. Now I don't have to have any kind of feelings about the situation and deal with my own internal problems. You should always just carry around a piece of paper with you that says this and you could just be like, hey dude, not my fault, bro. So the paper doesn't lie. As you can clearly see there, this is not my fault. Officer, I'll be on my way now. Good day. 
What do you mean you're trying to arrest me? I said good day, sir! I said good day! Read the paper! Thank you! And then when we talk about mental health, look at that! All of these things help determine someone's health. Okay, well how come some people who believe in themselves can lose weight and other people who don't believe in themselves are at the mercy of these diagrams? <laughs> <laughs> but because you're all so fat phobic, you can't open your mind and understand it. <laughs> <laughs> this person has the maturity of a five-year-old, dude. I've said it before. Hopefully you'll be less ignorant and educate yourself now. Okay, no offense to anybody, but like I've said before, the average maturity level in the fat acceptance movement is like that of a five-year-old. And it makes sense because their drug of choice is candy, essentially, so... You're eating like mommy and daddy are out of town for the weekend. And I'm not trying to offend anybody because I know a lot of you watching this are currently dealing with your weight. <laughs> but you know damn well that I'm right. A lot of the times you used to eat like your parents were out of town for the weekend. As an adult, you can admit to me, dude. It's me, the cynical dude, baby. It's fine. Next. <laughs> Hello there, everyone. I am just here to pop in to let you know that fat people... Why are you whispering again? Say it with your chest! Say it with your chest! I don't even believe this fat liberation coming from your soft-spoken ass. You're like, I'm just here to let you know. The fat people deserve to exist. Say it with your chest! You think I give a crap that the neighbors can hear me yelling right now? If you really cared about fat liberation, you would say it with your chest, motherfucker. You think I care what any of these people hear? No, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> fools, fools! This is my motherfucking neighborhood. You think I give a shit what any of these morons think? Say it with your chest! Every single fat person in the entire fucking universe. Every single fat person is worthy. Guess what? It's discriminated against because of their body size. Because we live in a fat phobic society who hates fat people and prioritizes thinness. Society doesn't prioritize thinness. Everybody was thin by default, and then recently everybody got fat. I don't know why you guys keep on trying to spin it the other way. Everybody wasn't fat, and then society was created for thin people just to stick it to fat people. People have been thin by default for millennia, and only recently did they get too large for the infrastructure, and then you guys started complaining. People aren't born fat, but then we made a thin society for some stupid reason. <laughs> like, what? That's the problem. Everybody is fat as hell by default, but we just keep making this thin society to oppress and control everyone. There is no discussion about this. Whoa, 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 Marissa. You don't have to start joining radical movements now, Marissa. Settle down. This, it literally is a fact. Fat people are discriminated against based on their body size in every aspect of life. When it comes to work, when it comes to health, when it comes to clothing. Like we've said countless times, you've excluded yourself from various aspects of society by what you have done to you. When it comes to relationships. Literally every aspect of a fat person's life, they are discriminated against because of their body size in some way, shape, or form. There's no arguing about this. Not fitting into chairs isn't discrimination. You're the one that made yourself not fit into the chair. So if it is actually discrimination, you're discriminating against yourself. So if I make it so that I cannot fit into certain infrastructure, who's discriminating against me? Society? Or is it me? I'm the one who made it so I can't fit in there, right? I just can't stop discriminating against myself, man. I'm a bigot against me, I guess. Man, I just can't stand to see people like me get ahead in life or something. <laughs> if you think that I'm wrong, then instead of projecting your own, like, thin insecurities onto me, stop for a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Instead of projecting your own thin insecurities onto me? Marissa, so when thin people give you a hard time about your weight, it's because they're projecting their own thin insecurities onto you? I would agree that people are insecure if they go around trying to make fun of other people's appearance. Absolutely. But their own thin insecurities? Oh, I know, those specific insecurities that are tied into being thin. Nobody wants to be thin, and everybody feels insecure when they're thin, right? God, I'm so thin. Do you think everyone will judge me? Do you think they'll say my ass looks snatched? Oh, God, that would be terrible. <laughs> Shut up.
shut up. I will agree though, if somebody randomly comes up to you and they're like, hey, you're fat, or tries to take the piss out of your appearance, that person is actually insecure. I'm just sitting over here minding my own business, dude. Even if you go up to somebody like Marissa or one of these other fat activists and randomly try to make fun of their appearance, it's because you're insecure and that's a jerk move. I've never endorsed going up to people and making fun of their appearance. Thin insecurities on to me. Stop. <laughs> For a second, take a step back and think, wow, I must be so ignorant that I've never thought or considered this, this experience before. Thank you and good night. Thank you and good night. Oh man, I must be so ignorant. I've never thought about this experience before or, or whatever. Damn it, me. My favorite part about that was when she said you were projecting your own thin insecurity. <laughs> what? Next. Now she's going to be responding to this comment that reads, Genetically different. You eat copious amounts of calories daily. Fatness is not genetic. Bad eating habits are hereditary. Big difference. Hi there, everyone. I'm going to take a moment for this ignorant person's comment to educate people on what an example of fat phobia is. Please educate this moron. And this is it. This per- <laughs> Hold on, hold on. That smug, snide look on your face, as well as the accompanying tone. Oh, it just does it for me. Let's hear it again. And this is it. <laughs> oh, man. This person knows nothing about me. They know nothing about me. But- they know Nothing about you. All right, calm down, Canadia. Here they are, assuming that they know about me. It's like they have cameras in my house. <laughs> Do they need to have cameras in your house? If somebody is drunk, I can guarantee that that person was drinking. You picking up what I'm laying down here? You sponging up what I'm spilling? If you are obese, I can tell that you've eaten before. This is not a ridiculous assumption, right? This is not crazy. The fat acceptance movement is literally somebody that's falling down drunk, denying that they've ever had a drop of alcohol in their entire life. That's the whole movement. What are you guys talking about? I've never even drank before. They're assuming that they know exactly what I eat every single day, that I must be overeating because I'm this fat. Well, they just said you eat copious amounts of calories daily and fatness is not genetic. Now, the word copious is fairly subjective. I would say that somebody is eating over their maintenance calories every single day, thus leading to weight gain. And guess what? That's an example of fat phobia. Your stereotypes of fat people, your unrealistic stereotypes of fat people. Unrealistic stereotypes of fat people. You mean the idea that what you eat leads to your weight? Are clouding your judgment and your biased stereotypes are making you come to this conclusion. This is not based in fact because you don't actually know about anything that I eat. Well, like I said, if somebody is drunk, we know that they have drank. If somebody is obese, we know that they have eaten in a caloric surplus. Whether or not we want to call that copious or not, you know, that's irrelevant. That's just the wording that they chose to use. Also, you're wrong. Yes, fatness is genetic. So that's another thing that you're uneducated about and ignorant about. What about all those starving kids in other countries? How come their genetics aren't kicking in and preventing them from withering away? How come all this obesity only happens in first world countries where people are eating copious amounts of processed foods? So I hope you all learned that this is an example of what fat phobia is so that you should not do it to other people. Thank you so much. Okay, so saying that obesity is the result of what we eat is fat phobia. That whole genetics argument is one of the dumbest things that I've ever heard. And like I've said countless times, it's just so embarrassing to make so many excuses for your own shortcomings. Just lie in the bed that you've made, Jesus Christ. <laughs> You know what I mean? Just take accountability for your own actions, bro. God. That's the most embarrassing part. It's not even embarrassing to be overweight. It's embarrassing to be overweight and then make excuses for why you're overweight. Just take accountability. God. <laughs> Next. Now she's going to be responding to this comment that says, both are bad. How about uplift women, not compare? Missing the mark on this. Okay, sweetie, let's just take a little look at this. All right, honey. Because if anyone Babe. has missed the mark, it's you on comprehending what the video even says. All right, dear. Fat shaming and skinny shaming are not the same thing. Yep, that's a fact. Pretty simple to comprehend that. 
I love that still image of you pointing at your wrist as you dance in the grass or whatever. Skinny shaming is bullying and is bad. Yet your comment is like both are bad. How about let's uplift women, miss the mark. Bro, I'm literally saying that skinny shaming is bad. Right, but they said both are bad. How about uplift women, not compare? Okay, so they're saying you shouldn't compare because they're both bad. And then you're saying, I'm not doing that, even though that's what I'm doing. What I'm differentiating is the fact that skinny shaming is not on a systemic level. Neither is fat shaming. So she's saying I didn't compare, but then she goes on to compare and say that fat shaming is worse because it's systemic. How is it systemic and what the hell are you talking about? We could just say that about anything, right? You guys were being shamed for being poor. I was being shamed for being a slut. Slut shaming is systemic, so it's way worse than you being shamed for being poor. What, what are you talking about? There's no shaming that's systemic. <laughs> There's no shame built into our system at all. There should be. There should be various levels of shame built into our system because society is really crumbling. We need to bring shame back, honestly. Shame of all different types. It's okay to feel ashamed. It's okay to be like, hey, I'm fucking up. Let's fix myself and stop being a degenerate. It's okay to say that to yourself. Whereas fat shaming is, therefore making it fat phobia. Okay, you still haven't proven that at all. You just say that fat phobia is systemic, which means nothing. I didn't go to get a job and they busted the calipers out and put them to work on my midsection to see if I could have said job. I don't think the system is trying to keep them down. The only thing keeping them down is gravity. Self-imposed gravity, my friend. Therefore, it's bad and therefore worse than skinny shaming because skinny shaming is not done on a systemic level. None of those words mean anything, my friend. These words, once you leave the comfort of TikTok, don't mean anything anymore. They're just buzzwords that dumb people use to try to sound intelligent. Because being thin has a social and a hierarchy power in our society. Being fat doesn't. Therefore, there's a power imbalance. Therefore, they- What? You don't get special privileges just because you're thin. If people view obese people in a negative light, like they think that it's a sign of laziness or a lack of self-control, that's just people's personal opinions. It has nothing to do with the system or anything like that. And you don't automatically get the key to the city just because you're thin. Trust me, I've been trying. They are not the same and can't be deemed as the same. They're both bad, but I literally said that. Okay, so the comment said you shouldn't compare them, you should uplift women. And in response to that, you doubled down on comparing them and said that fat shaming is way worse than skinny shaming. Bravo! You missed the point completely. That seems to be very common in these videos. Somebody will make a very good point and a fat activist will not even respond to it. Next, now she's gonna be responding to these comments that read, people who are actually confident and at ease with their body don't spend so much time making vids about being confident and at ease with their body. It's yourself you're trying to convince. Going on and on about accessibility on your page, but replying to a deaf viewer without adding captions chef's kiss so apparently there's some miscommunication here with my content i think so um i don't create my content to like prove to people that i don't hate myself because i know i don't hate myself i don't need to prove to anyone i don't prove to me that you don't hate yourself and go i'm not convinced okay no not good enough you do hate yourself and I'm not trying to prove to anyone that, that I'm confident in my body because I just am, okay? Okay. Clear on that point? What I am doing with my content is demonstrating the confidence so that other fat people can also have the same confidence. <laughs> is that what you call that? Okay, all right, man, thank you for uplifting the rest of us or whatever now i know how to respond to troll comments like what my content is not about you yes it is you take that back my content is not to prove to the fat foes that i don't hate myself i just know that i don't my content is to help other fat people and other people in larger bodies do you think it's doing that to feel okay about their bodies is it accomplishing that and i do that by demonstrating that i'm okay in my body uh -huh. Let's critically think here instead of just assuming everything is about you. <laughs> they didn't say it was about them. 
They said if you were confident and at ease with your body, you wouldn't constantly talk about how you're confident and at ease with your body. They're basically saying a variation of what I always say, which is that confidence is quiet and insecurity is loud. If you constantly go around talking about how confident you are, it's because you're not confident. If you were confident, you would shut the hell up and just live your life. Sound good? Okay. Sounds great. Okay. Next. Now she's going to be responding to this comment that reads, It's easy to see the world from your own perspective. You don't know what other people are dealing with. Hi there, guess what? I never f claim to. I don't know a thin person's experience because I haven't been thin since I was a child. Okay. And even that, I don't even think that I was completely straight-sized. <laughs> okay, so you've been dealing with this obesity thing your whole life. But you know what I do know? I know my own fat experience. And that's something that you don't know. You don't know my experience. Right, and that's what they said. They said it's easy to see the world from your own perspective. Your response to that is, yeah, I can see the world from my perspective. Are we even in the same conversation, bro? You don't know other fat people's experiences. And the way the cookie crumbles is that thin people are not discriminated against in every yeah. aspect of their f lives. Here we go again. Neither are fat people. It's not discrimination if you can't fit into the chair. Like I said, if it is, you're the one doing the discriminating against yourself. Because of their thinness and their body size. But guess what? Fat people fucking are. So the next time you want to project your own emotions and shit onto something that you are not comfortable with seeing, stop for a second, realize that you're projecting, and then maybe don't comment bullshit like this. They're projecting because they said it's easy to see the world from your own perspective. You don't know what other people are dealing with. What? <laughs> what? You're putting words in my mouth I've never said. Your perspective is wrong. And instead of just taking a step back and listening and learning, you're being a dick. So thank you. How are they being a dick? It says it's easy to see the world from your own perspective. You don't know what other people are dealing with. That's one of the nicest disagreeing statements that I've heard. They weren't even mean. Thank you so much and I hope that you learned something today. I'm sure they did learn something today. Never try to have a nice conversation with the fat activists or ask them a genuine question because they will flip it around and start attacking you. Next, when they say they can't find it. Can't find what? <laughs> I love Marissa's dancing. I'm gonna have to confess that that's one of my guilty pleasures right here, right now. I unironically love it. <laughs> oh my god! Why? What are you doing? <laughs> oh man! Okay. <laughs> what the hell, man? I love Marissa's dancing videos, dude. They're the best. And I have another one. I've saved the best for last here. We have to have a palate cleanser, right? Next. All right, now she's going to break it down for us. Fat shaming and skinny shaming are not the same thing. Skinny shaming is bullying and is bad, but fat shaming is discrimination because it happens on a systemic level. You still haven't explained how it's systemic. And is deemed okay and acceptable by a lot of society, which isn't right, fair, or okay. All right, and then we wrapped up the collection of videos by seeing Marissa dancing with captions on the screen saying that skinny shaming is not as bad as fat shaming because fat shaming is systemic, which she still hasn't explained. We can literally say that anything is systemic without any sort of evidence to back it up, and that's what they're doing here. I disagree with all of the aforementioned. So what do you think of the clips that we just saw? Is obesity genetic? Is fat shaming worse than skinny shaming because it's systemic? And is it actually a display of insecurity to constantly talk about how confident you are? Leave a comment below. Happy Monday, everybody. Anyway, 
that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.